All right, hello again. I'm going to go over how to do your research paper here. So uh, um, I'll kind of show you, you know, what I'm looking for. First of all, I'm just going to go to one of these classes because they're all kind of just set up the same. Lessons. In fact, all four classes have to answer the same thing, so it'll be easy. Please submit your research paper according to the due date found on the syllabus. Research paper 719 by 11.59 p.m. And reminder, you must complete a five to seven page research paper on a topic of your choice that we'll, we will cover in this course. Chicago style formatting and documentation are required. Please see the syllabus section of Blackboard for more information on proper Chicago style citations. So a five to seven page research paper on a topic of your choice. Now that sounds pretty difficult. But it's really, I promise it's not. Um, what I want you to do, and I said this in the video from last week, is think of something you're interested in. Somebody today sent me a, a Blackboard message asking about the pyramids. Pyramids are perfectly fine. If you're interested in the pyramids, that's good. That's what you can research. Or if you're in U.S. history, if you're interested in Abraham Lincoln, look him up. That is great. It's literally anything that you're interested in that we have talked about in this class. That's what I want you to research. Why? Because I want you to take time to broaden your mind, find something you're interested in, or at least you hate less than everything else we've talked about, and see what you can come up with when you, when you study it. All right, I'm going to click on syllabus here. And there are a couple of things. Actually, for this class, it's not syllabus, sorry. U.S. history and world history have things in slightly different place. Um, Chicago style citation information and discussion rubric. If you have never heard of Chicago style citations before, don't worry. A lot of people haven't. But if you look at your textbook, your textbook actually uses Chicago style formatting it's because that's what we use in history. Also, in this Chicago style citation information discussion rubric uh, folder, I've got some things you can use. First of all is this Chicago style quick guide. I'm going to download it so you can see it. And it should load for me. My internet is not the fastest here. And what it does is it downloads a Word document that you can look at. And it gives you examples of how you do Chicago style formatting. This is something you can download, you can print out, whatever it is you may want to do. And in history, we use something called notes and bibliography. And down here, you can see examples of how you're supposed to quote everything. Uh, for If you have a book that has one author, the B is what goes at the end of your paper. The N is what goes on the bottom of your paper. And you might say, the bottom of your paper? What in the world are you talking about? Chicago style formatting uses footnotes and I'll show you how to do a footnote really quickly here in a moment. But if you follow this Chicago style quick guide, it's going to show you exactly how everything should be formatted when you're doing a Chicago style paper. So Chicago style quick guide is very useful for you. There's also this thing called the crap test, how to evaluate sources. This is another uh, page that you can look at. This one is actually in the form of a PDF. And it tells you what to look for when you're looking at sources. Currency, meaning is it up to date? You don't want to research using stuff that was written in like 1842 because history has come a long way since 1842. Relevance. Make sure that you're using a source that's relevant. If you are researching the pyramids, you don't want to be looking up stuff on Abraham Lincoln. If you are doing a research paper on Abraham Lincoln, you don't want to be looking at stuff about JFK, etc., etc. Make sure whatever your source you're looking for is relevant to the topic you're interested in. Authority. The person who's writing your topic or writing your source, are they an authority on the subject. For example, you don't want my dog to be writing a website about Abraham Lincoln because my dog doesn't know anything about Abraham Lincoln. 
The only thing my dog would know about Abraham Lincoln is if Abraham Lincoln was a milk bone dog biscuit. So make sure when you're looking at sources that whatever source you're using, it's an authority writing it. And then accuracy. In history, you want to try to use something that is middle of the road, non-biased. It doesn't influence you to believe one way or the other. You just want to try to use something that presents the facts. And purpose, too. You don't want to use something that's meant to persuade you or entertain you. You want something that's trying to inform you and is middle of the road. If you've had a speech class with with uh, instructor Kirk, Mrs. Kirk, whatever you want to call her, uh, she's very big on a non-biased essay or a non-biased uh, speech because she wants speeches that are just the facts. So that's what this crap test is, is to help you pick out sources. And then there's something called the Purdue Owl Chicago Manual of Style. If you click on this Chicago Manual of Style, it brings you to this website by Purdue University. And this is the absolute best resource I can think of to show you for, for writing. If we were in, in person, face to face, I would be showing you this and just going nuts over it. If you've never seen the Purdue Owl, it means Purdue Online Writing Lab, and it's going to show you how to do pretty much everything you need to. It's going to give you a Chicago style chart system. It's going to give you an example of how to quote pretty much everything you can think of. It will even show you how to do a sample paper. And remember with history, we do the notes and bibliography. So we do this NB sample paper. Pretend author date does not exist. You never saw author date. You only do NB sample paper. Now when load, it shows you how to set up your paper. So you got a front page, tells you how to do everything. It shows you how to do your footnotes. That is a footnote, that little number one right there, if you see that. There's another footnote, the little number two. And it shows you how everything should work. So take a minute, five minutes, you could probably look through this sample paper and you can figure out exactly what it's supposed to look like. But the Chicago Manual Style, style uh, over here on the left, it shows you how to do books, same as my, my quick guide does, footnotes, bibliography, book by one author, book by multiple authors, everything is right here that you need. So that's real quick, the Chicago Style Quick Guide, the crap test, how to evaluate your sources, and the Purdue Owl. Now, how do you do research? Well, I know this isn't a master's level or even a, a uh, degree level class for history, but there are still some standards we need to follow. Number one, there is a website called Ducksters, D-U-C-K-S-T-E-R-S.com. Do not use Ducksters. Remember, you have to think about relevancy. Um, if a website looks like it's meant for kids, it's probably meant for kids. As much as I like kids, this is not a class for kids. So what? where do we do research? Access Galileo right here in Blackboard. If you click Access Galileo, that's going to give you direct access to Galileo, which is a service provided by the state of Georgia. Now, some of you may have used Galileo, some of you may have not have. Um, it's really easy to use. It works almost the same as Google but it's going to do Google with um, professional things. Um, no, education, I guess I should say. Now here, this is the beginning of EBSCOhost, which is a search engine for Galileo. And it sounds like it'd be all nice and neat, but we're gonna change this a little bit. We're gonna go to I clicked Galileo up in the top left corner and it brings me to this page right here. And we want to browse by subject. We want to go to history and we just want general history right there. 
Now what this is going to do is going to give us a list of databases that we can search that are specifically for history. And depending on what you are looking for, the database that you want to use might be a little different. In general, Academic Search Complete here at the top is really good for history. The History Reference Center can be very useful. ProQuest can be useful as well. Now for simplicity, I'm just going to click on Academic Search Complete here at the top. And that should work fine for anything you need to search as well. All right, so now we are in a database. Now first thing you have to do, you have to scroll down here to the bottom because there's something really important I need you to do. Where it says limit your results, you have to click full text. You have to click scholarly peer reviewed. Full text means that you're going to get the whole thing. Scholarly means it, it is something good to use. That means other specialists, other professionals have looked at it. They have verified the information in it and then said, yes, you can publish this. So always, what, no matter what database you're using, full text, scholarly peer review journals. Now pyramids, P-Y-R-M-I-D-S, pyramids, I can spell. Now notice, all I've done is typed in the word pyramids and there are a ton of different things here you can look for. This is very much just like Google. You can look up multiple things. Pyramids of Giza, pyramids of Egypt, pyramids of construction, pyramids and palm trees, Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln Memorial, Lincoln Assassination, lots of different things you can look for. So I'm going to pick just something random. Let's say I'm interested in Julius Caesar. If I just do Julius Caesar, this will give me all the information on Julius Caesar. I'm going to search. It gives me 215 different things. So there are plenty of different resources out there. Uh, let's do Abraham Lincoln. I'm going to search for Abraham Lincoln. We have 876 different things on Abraham Lincoln. So when you're searching for whatever topic you're interested in, you should not have trouble finding enough sources. For a five to seven page page paper, how many sources should you need? Probably five to seven. So once you figure out what you're interested in, let's say Constantine. Constantine Christianity, Constantine the Great, Constantine the Emperor. There are lots of different things that you can find. Now some of these may not be the best, some of these might be what you need, you just kind of have to look through. And you might say, I really don't want to read all of this. A lot of these PDF full texts will have a little short blurb that tells you what they're about. So you want to do five to seven sources, let's say Constantine and Christianity. got 105 sources on how Constantine became Christian. I'll say the Battle of Gettysburg for you American history people. Got 33 sources on the Battle of Gettysburg. That's more than enough to write a five page paper on Gettysburg. The most important thing is just sitting down and looking at these sources and getting your paper started. Now let me open up real quick uh, Microsoft Word. And I'll show you really quick how you do a footnote in Microsoft Word. I'll just do a blank document here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is going to be the sentence that I put a footnote on. Let's say that this is a quote from a source. 
We put it in quotations, of course. And then after your quotation mark, what you do is you go to References. And you click right here where it says Insert Footnote. What this will do is we'll put a number one right after where I typed all by itself instantly and it will take me to the bottom of the page where I can type in my information. So insert footnote and look there's a little number one here I didn't do anything but touch one button and I would put in my source That's the name of my paper, and then you would put in, uh, it's just published in New York by Basement Publishing, it's because I'm in my mother's basement right now, and it was published in 2020, and we'll say it was on page 478 of that book. So that is how you would do a footnote. And how do you, what format do you use? Look at that Chicago Quick Guide and it will tell you what to do. And notice, right after the number one, or right after the sentence, there is a number one. Now, if you need to do another sentence, let's say you're para paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing a sentence from a book, but not quoting directly you still have to footnote that if it's not your original idea. So once again, I'm gonna click insert footnote. It will put a little number two and drop me down to the bottom of the page where I can do another footnote. So Microsoft Word does a lot of the work for you if you, if you let it do it. So don't think you have to format everything. Microsoft Word, if you open it up and just start typing your your font will be okay if you go over to references you can just click insert footnote your footnotes will be okay uh, there's not a lot you have to do in Microsoft Word extra don't say that all right so those are the basics of what what you need to do number one pick a topic number two use Galileo to find information on your topic Number three, look at the Chicago Quick Guide to figure out how to do the formatting of your sources. And number four, write the dumb thing. And don't wait till the last minute. I say this from experience. I know a lot of you are going to procrastinate because it's what you do. But I say this from experience having written more papers than I can even name off. Don't wait till the last minute. Do a little bit of research each night and then start writing your paper so it doesn't just freak you out there the last day. Oh my goodness, I have a five-page paper to write in 20 minutes. Don't do that. One of the best things I can suggest for you, once again, personal experience, do a an outline. If you do an outline and you add information, those out those outline points turn into paragraphs those paragraphs turn into pages and before you know it you have a five page paper and my sincere hope is since you're doing a five page paper on something that you're interested in you should have no problems doing this um, if you have any questions though if there's something you need to know email me blackboard message me pop into to discord because I'm always on there it's on my phone um, I'll help you in any way I can from a distance of course to get this paper done but you got two weeks to do it and i wish you good luck we'll talk to you soon again bye bye